Oh. Hi. Hey. How are you? How you guys doing? How are you? Doing okay. Hey, how are you? Little sippy sips. Little sippy. And some little ASMR. Some. I don't like that. A lot of people drink espresso. Yeah. They air Loud. Air, they aerate it into their mouth. Well, those people should not do that. I was going to say something mean, and then I realized this is the Friday bean. Something, not... something about beanies on the back of the head, I'm sure. Beanies on the back. I'm a beanie on the back of the head person. Yeah, but you're a poser. I am a poser. That's okay. How are you guys doing this Friday? You guys doing okay? <laughs> Happy Friday. Happy um, Friday. So today we're going to be talking about the thing that everybody's freaking out about, but there's no reason to freak out. Uh, nah. And we're going to talk about why you shouldn't freak out, <laughs> among other things. But... This is about the all new Etsy gift mode feature. Um, they have really been hyping this up. And I don't know, I, I think that who was, I'm sure that you guys are in the chat, but somebody in Handmade Alpha Academy, I was just skimming comments and somebody said something like, it's like Etsy is like patting themselves on the back, like, yay. I know you guys asked for customer service and human intervention and us to stop deactivating listings unnecessarily, but gift mode, yay! Mm -hmm. and, but, you know... It, for one, you guys got to remember that the, that a lot of things are multi-department things, so, like, yeah. the customer service isn't even going to be on the same side as, like, the development team, so you can't, exactly. really, you can't really hate on it like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I know that it's frustrating when uh, we want other things and they're introducing us to something that we didn't ask for. Um, but I did. Here's here's the thing. We, Mark and I, spent some time kind of clicking around, playing with it, and we're gonna show you guys today um, how it works. I also read deep into it to kind of find out how it works. Yeah. So here's the thing. <clears throat> It's really cool. However, I don't think it's going to take away from anybody who doesn't sell gifts. I know that there's speculation that like Etsy's only prioritizing gifts. You know, I don't sell gifts. That's not how it's going to be because when I was playing around with it, it was very generic to me. It felt very much like when you click on the the categories that Etsy already gave us. And it, it's almost like if you search for um, gifts for men on Etsy, or if you search into, thank you, if you search their Father's Day section, for example, um, you know, you get like monogrammed leather wallets and little slate coasters and whiskey glasses and money clips and, uh, oh, what are the... the uh, Watches? No, not watch. The, uh, 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 Bracelets? Uh, no, the, the little things that go in your suits, the... um. What are the th the things? You know the little the little things that go. Yeah, into the I know buttons. what they are. I don't. Uh, I can't offhand remember what they're. Oh called. my god, I'm so dumb. What are what are they called? Anyway, it's all like the same stuff. It's like when you go to the. Who wears suits anymore? Well, it's like when you go to the store and you look at the Father's Day section and cufflinks. it's like, yeah, cufflinks. It's like you know the Father's Day section has tools and beer and man's barbecue sauce men's stuff you know and, and that's very much like how this felt because we were clicking around i was clicking for anniversary gift for men and then it gives you some categories okay outdoor section i think like astrology and space was a section and then it just generates a bunch of categories that I don't know. It, it just doesn't feel very personalized and maybe it'll get better with time because they did mention that it's an AI tool and maybe it just needs to learn. Maybe it's in its infant stages. It's cool. It's cool for people who don't know what the heck they're looking for um, or, you know, they know that they need to buy something for someone, but they don't know what to buy. That's not most of us, right? <clears throat> most of us, when we're shopping on Etsy, we have a vague idea of what we want to buy, and we're going to search for it with keywords, not just browsing through a bunch of menus. So, and, and the weird thing about it is there's like, there's a lot of data to prove that. So this was kind of a weird decision on their part. I think, really, I think it was their way of an attempt to see how they could integrate AI in a non-invasive way. Yeah. I think before they attempt to like stick it in the back end where <laughs> before yeah, you're terrible. Before they put it in the back end of the site behind like shops where we know in the past they've done something similar and they've like really screwed things up and like shut sh yes, I know. I'm they've, trying, I'm trying. They've really shut hard. shops down and and 
created a lot of issues with trying to do their own, like, control style of AI. And I think this is a way that <laughs> it's just now reaching them, so. Uh, I think this is their attempt at doing it in a way that can't really affect your actual shop all that much. And like, like she said... We have data proving that most people shop for themselves on Etsy. Yeah, or um, something like seventy percent of people say that they shop on Etsy. I forget what the actual data was. Well, it was a I lot mean, of people. Well, it was okay. So we do our uh, E Rank buyer surveys where over at E Rank we have the ability because we work with you know large data companies, and one of them that we work with, we are able to send surveys out to people who have recently made purchases on Etsy, not sellers, but actual shoppers, and we send that out to a thousand shoppers who have mm -hmm. recently made a purchase, and there's a bunch of questions about their experience. And of those, when we asked, um, who are you buying for? And it was like, you know, a male or a female? Are you buying for a pet? Are you buying for a spouse? Are you buying for uh, a relative? Are you buying for yourself? Most people, I think, it, I think it was, it was like 79%. Yeah, said, it was a lot of people. Said that they were buying for themselves. So now, and it was a mixed set of data too. Like a lot of people that said they were buying for themselves also bought for other people. It wasn't just like a this or that. It right. Was, it was across the board. However, significantly more people said that they were shopping for themselves than any other category that was provided. I think shopping for gifts for others was like 30 or 40%. It was like a lot of people did still buy gifts for other right. people, but significantly more people bought stuff for themselves. And again, like I said, I think this is their, and, and I'm not, I probably won't read the article here, but it was, uh, Etsy going into like how they're actually doing everything. And we know for a fact that it is AI driven. They are using GPT-4 yeah. along with their current uh, their current data and whatever they consider their data set to be. And they're putting them together and having it kind of run the show, I think. There are no specifics available about what part of what is doing what. I think if you look at it, if you work with AI enough, you can still kind of see exactly what they're doing. However, there's a couple benefits to this too. Um, there's a couple other things I probably won't discuss that have to do with AI and AI listings specifically well, I uh, that I think that they're using this for. Not the, not the lack of AI content, but like what their plans with that might be. Um, but this... Honestly, could be a way for them to target AI listings specifically and kind of kick them to the back. Yeah, I. So if people are specifically searching aware. searching for AI generated content, um, I'm sure they're going to find it because the keyword algorithm is likely going to be very different than what we're seeing with the gift mode. However, exactly. when we were navigating through the and we'll we'll experiment with it together uh, live today, but two things I noticed, I was I was specifically trying to get it to give me. AI art. Like I was like clicking art and, you know, like I'm interested in art. Give me art. Like I was hoping that it would give me some AI generated content. And from what I could tell, it didn't. So maybe I, I had a hard time. I could, I didn't find what I could blatantly see as an AI, even the art, like on some of the items that were more like printed style, which mm -hmm. for again, POD was another thing that really didn't show up on no, there a whole lot, which I know that sucks for you guys. But again, Etsy wasn't really built as a platform for stuff like that. And so we're, P we're POD. We do POD. So don't, don't take that the wrong way. We're just, we're just <laughs> stating facts. The thing is yeah. Etsy, Etsy wasn't really built for something like POD. It was meant more for like handmade, like mom crafts or people that were really good at doing what they did to sell their items to people who aren't crafty. That's kind of the point of Etsy. So yeah. can't really be mad at it. Plus, it's AI driven. So there's probably a, a, a small lack of control over specifics. But again, neither here nor there. We don't, There's not a lot of information about what specifically it's doing. However, they do give a lot. Maybe we should open the article at some point. There are a lot of specifics I that do. they I talk about. You have it? Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I wanted to go over that because there's a lot of like what I think are little hints towards things that maybe we should pay attention to, but. Yeah, so I think that it, it's almost like a good thing for everyone in a way, for everybody who's like, arr, AI art, boo, arr, POD, boo. You know, there is now a place for that. And you know, everybody a few months ago was saying there needs to be a special spot just for POD and there needs to be a special spot just for AI. Well, we don't have that, but maybe we have a special spot for everything that isn't that. And maybe for those of us who do do POD, um, 
maybe we're going to have to try a little bit harder to make sure that we're targeting niches like we've been talking about from the get-go. Maybe we uh, need to try a little bit harder, uh, not just using generic mock-ups like we've been teaching from the get-go. We're about to release our... Um, Crescent City collection because we are officially licensed by Sarah J. Moss and the third Crescent City book is coming out this upcoming Tuesday. So we have been monitoring, you know, new book releases for authors that we're partnered with. Um, and we're launching a collection the day before the third book of this very popular series comes out, targeting those keywords and we're taking all our own photos. We are ordering samples of everything. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's a tax write-off. Um, and, and we're trying to make sure that we are fitting in to a niche. So for those of you who do POD, don't feel left out of this gift mode thing. Um, you know, there and somebody had said that they couldn't find like a bookish category in the gift mode. There isn't. It, it's not very specific. In fact, it's covering <laughs> only a very, very few categories. I, I think that... Um, if they end up expanding it over time, I, I don't know, maybe they don't want to expand it. Maybe they want to keep it simple so that yep. people can quickly, you know, boop, 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 and then bam, products. So, yeah, I think it's important too, because Emin Sweet had said, uh, I'm worried about the anti-AI art. <clears throat> AI is based on the original works and artists have already come forward that they're getting hit by false positives in public perception. Okay. Here's the thing. Quick, quick blurb on, on AI here real quick, because I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. AI was still in its infancy, even just a couple of months ago. <clears throat> Sentences would come out goofed. Uh, everything kind of sounded the same. Um, couldn't understand context. Didn't understand anything more complex than what it was told in a literal form. And that's not the case anymore. Uh, some stuff with AI is a little frightening. However, you got to understand that with technology, it's... An exponential curve. Eventually, it gets to a point where technology will skyrocket. With AI, we are at the point where we're about to skyrocket. And we know this because we've gone from barely understanding how AI works uh, to a point where we now have surpassed human understanding in terms of what AI can understand. Tell them about that AI, um, that video. I, I, that... I will. I, okay. will. I, have, I have a few. Okay. AI is now so advanced to the point where it can look at your social media and a couple of pictures of you, determine your political affiliation, whether or not you've had kids, your sexual orientation. Even if you don't know that you may have a different sexual orientation yet, it is like 99.9% .9 accurate. Uh, it can tell like what kind of cars you probably like, what you speak like, what your accent is like, just by looking at you. They have AI now that can use the signals off of your Wi-Fi router to create a visual representation of you in 3D space to see through your walls. Like AI is an extremely intelligent piece of equipment far beyond how we understand. So that being said, when it comes to something like Etsy, they're not using something that advanced. Very likely, they're not using something that advanced. However, you guys have to understand that something has to be able has to be done to control a market that's becoming so hyper saturated with with crap content that's just a bunch of people slapping random prompts in AI and stick it on a shirt. Human intervention is not possible at this level. You would have to have, again, something like Amazon money to be able to hire 100, 200,000 employees just to take care of this kind of spam for a single company. It's not possible. So the only c combat to this kind of system where people could even set up an AI to create an Etsy shop, create all the all the products for them, including all the photos, do all the SEO for them and upload them at, 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 at ridiculous rates, thousands of listings a minute. AI has to be used to combat that. Humans are not capable of doing it because it is beyond human capability. So before we get into be like being super spooked about AI, AI is here. AI is not going anywhere. And AI regulations are already too far behind what AI already is. Um, just the same as like you see with social media a couple of years ago, there were a lot of lawsuits with data protection and they really didn't go very far because Facebook and Instagram have been around for so long that essentially regulating them would put them out of business. And the government can't have that because they're like near trillion dollar corporations. So AI's here. AI's not going anywhere. It's only going to get better. And the, the best thing that you can do is learn how to optimize your use of it in an ethical way 
instead of stealing art from people, you can use AI to help you like generate your, your description prompts, and then you can adjust them to, to help you. That way you're outputting at a rate that makes sense. You're, you're, uh, I, I just did it for a presentation that we're doing for the alphas on Tuesday. I didn't have it generate a prompt, but I had it take all of the notes that I had and had it put it into a usable workflow. I had it uh, verify the information that I put into it was correct. And then I asked it to put it at a high school level. That way it was understandable to people who didn't understand computers. There are uses for AI. So you have to, you have to be able to take it and adapt it for yourself. And if you don't want to use it, that's completely fine. It probably won't be able to do good things like SEO anytime soon for you, at least not in a public space. You'd have to probably use their like uh, their API and design your own and all that. That's too advanced. They pr there probably won't be a lot of public tools for stuff like that. Um, so don't be freaked out by it and understand that Etsy's use of it probably isn't malicious. And I know a lot of people were freaking out like, oh, gifts. It's they're trying to turn it into a gift platform. I don't think that's the case. I mean, 100% uh, honesty, I think they're using it to test how GPT-4 interacts with their system in a way that doesn't affect it negatively. Yeah. I, I really do think that's what they're doing. And we'll get in. We can go ahead and jump into it so I can stop rambling because <laughs> my ADHD brain will. No, I, I will mansplain this whole thing until we end the stream. Right. Well, no, it's it's true, though. And we've been spending <clears throat> a lot of time lately. Um his his Instagram reels feed right now because he keeps watching like content about mm -hmm. AI advancements. We keep getting more yeah. and more information about yeah. you yeah. know the the latest AI advancements, and some of them are are truly terrifying. But there, as he said, that we're not going to be able to stop it. It yeah. doesn't mean that you have to use nope. it. And, and it, I and we are reg. I mean, we are kind of against it for the use of making products specifically. I don't like it. I don't think you should use generative AI to create images. It's ninety nine percent of the stuff out there isn't ethical. Yeah, and it's not cool. It's not a cool thing to do. Yeah. Um. But eventually, th they're working on some type of like c like stamp, almost like fair trade coffee. You know how you know that it's fair trade because it's got the fair trade stamp. They're working on a a stamp of approval that basically tells you if the um, image generator you're using is sourcing art ethically in order to um, utilize for prompts. Give me so, one second. What's the matter? It was moving because it wasn't set up properly. Oh, okay. Um, but. You know, we'll we'll keep an eye on that. But let's go ahead and <clears throat> let's pop open our um Yeah, let me get the tab scooted. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's one of the it's one of those things where you're gonna have to learn to adapt. AI is here, it's not going anywhere, and it is already rocketing our understanding of technology. I mean, we've had two video games release and the, you guys have probably heard about it. Even you guys that don't play it, the like Pokemon with guns game. There's a lot of videos breaking down how it was probably almost 100% created in AI, with AI, and it shows because it's a little indie studio, and they currently have one of the highest concurrently played video games in history, and that doesn't happen for indie studios very often, and the game is kind of almost perfect. It's eerie. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, go ahead and start Ooh. at the far left article. Far left. This is the one that you had wanted to break down for them? Uh, no, it was not. Oh. This is the one that I wanted to break down the checklist. Oh, well, go ahead and start with... Okay, what are we doing with it? We're sharing it. Okay. okay. So All you, baby. Uh, down below in the video description, I have all of these <clears throat> linked for you guys so you can pop them open, but this is from the Etsy community page where um, one of the Etsy staff members posted an overview of what this is. They are going to be rolling out a commercial during the Super Bowl, which is super exciting. I, I had a couple people uh, mention during the E-Rank live stream yesterday that they're trying to appeal to a male audience, but I don't think that's the case. I think that they're trying to appeal to the family dynamic. They're yeah. trying to mainly hit the American household. You know, mom and dad and the kids are all sitting down together to watch the football game, and I think that that's where they're really trying to... to bring attention. Um, so that's actually kind of cool. Somebody had mentioned that they did notice that, I, I think it was Debbie. Debbie, was it you? Who had mentioned that in an Etsy commercial that she saw, they specifically said handmade again, which they haven't done in a while. That's pretty cool. Um, which I love. I hope they go back to that. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, this one, if you want to check this out, this is just an overview of what it is. There's a little video. We're going to be showing it to you today. But the one that you're going to want to look at is this checklist for optimizing your listings. Now, before we get into this, let's actually play 
with the tool so you can understand what it does. And then Mark, he read over this probably more in depth than I did. I, kinda, I read the whole thing, yeah. I glanced at it. No, I read the whole thing in depth because it's super important. So we are, oh, look, it's all my items. <laughs> we are going to show you where you can find it. So um, I'm not logged in right now, but whether you're logged in or not, you should have a gift mode feature. And if you're on the app, it'll be down at the bottom of your screen and there will be a little present jumping up and down. So look for the gift mode feature or you can click it up here in the top right. So that's two places that they're highlighting it. They really, really want you to check it out. And they're using that blue new to get people. Yep. Because nobody looks at that drop that drop line there. So there's a couple things that you can do. Um, you can go based on who you're shopping for, or they have popular gift ideas based on interests. So pickleball, newlyweds, Pisces, bird watchers. And this is seasonal. So Pisces, you know, it's about to be February. They're probably going to update this almost like when we talk about the target trends and I show you how to find, you know, the target finds page. They update those based on what's popular at the time. So... Very interesting, but you'll notice that these are all very beautiful photos. Um, they're all very styled. Go back one tab. No, here. Oh. Isn't that one of our alphas? No. That sells those? We do have an alpha that sells these, but no, that's not okay. one of our alphas. Um, there's a very consistent style with the photos and things that they're showcasing. It's pretty it's pretty good at that, yeah. Yeah, it's it's all got a very specific aesthetic to it. And and I'm sure that this AI is probably looking at our at our SEO to determine, but it might also be looking at our photos because I'm noticing very consistent photos um throughout the listings that are being featured. So that might be something that we want to consider. So let's go ahead and play around. I'm going to say that I want to buy a gift for, we'll say mom. Mom, next question. And then what's the occasion? We will say... New baby. New baby. New baby. My mom had a baby. There you go. New baby. New baby. <laughs> yeah, let's try to confuse it, but new baby. Oh, you want to confuse it? Yeah, I want to see if we can confuse it because I, so far, have not been able to confuse it. All Mo right. Mom, new baby, great food. Mom who has a new baby and they are into... Peace well, and quiet. <laughs> well, we already know that. No, let's do the outdoors. The outdoors. I want food. Outdoors. Outdoors and food. Yep. And you can They pick... like eating out food outdoors with their new baby. Okay. Okay. Show gift ideas. I think it gives you multiple Ew. categories. Ew, I don't like that. Ooh. Sorry with anybody that's got it. What's it called? The what where you don't like the whole the holes. What what's it called? Uh, ace. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> What is it called when you don't like holes? Not, not, don't. The, the appropriate the, version. The please. appropriate version. Okay, so the nature. Tryptophobia? Tryptophobia, is that it? Is that tryptophobia? Yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Um, okay, so nature lover. See, none of these say new, new baby though, right? Like the hiker. So there's some hiking stuff and food. Yeah, these are all individual. It's not, they're just giving you a few categories, but you will see that like, all of the things that they're putting in these categories, like all of the pictures go well together. They're beautiful, there's not a yeah. Single, there's not a single category where things are just like, they look terrible together. Nothing is nothing here is based on a new baby, though. That's why I'm a little confused. Like, why do they ask you for that? See, I think everybody has tryptophobia a little bit. Yeah. I think it makes everybody a little uncomfortable. And I think some people just look, the only people who don't are the ones that look at it and get like ASMR from it. So nature-inspired wall art. So it gives you ideas for wall art do these all have listing videos? No. I was just curious to see. No. However, they all fit together in their little image space. So that's perfect. The only one that's kind of off is the blue one and they put it in the corner. So. Yeah. And then you can hit show more for more of them. Bird feeders. Crystal said anniversary gift for aunt, for husband who loves his pet confuses it. So bird feeders. All really good photos. Nature inspired jewelry. That's the thing, though, is like you can see that this stuff isn't it's not AI is not good at reading context, but it knows that like if there's a woman who has a new baby who likes outdoorsy stuff, she's probably going to be at home a lot. So bird Standing watching on, in the window, watching the bird. Yeah, like it's it's pretty smart. They're probably going to want their house decorated outdoorsy. They're going to wear jewelry that's outdoor themed. They got terrariums, a little bit of outdoors, indoors. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty smart where it's at. And this is brand new. So this will probably get 
better as time goes along. I think this is an extremely intelligent thing. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe it's not that smart yet, but let's try to- Well, the thing is like with that, for instance, if you're not a good gift giver, if you are someone who's searching for somebody like that, it's giving you ideas that you wouldn't necessarily think of. It's giving you categories that aren't just like, here's stuff to do outside. Like, it's giving you multiple categories of things that are related to it or so, could be related to it. Let's let's really confuse it. Let's say it's a gift for a baby and the occasion is new baby. But then let's say that the baby likes outdoors and, and drinks <laughs> and drinks. OK, let's see. Let's see what it gives us. OK, OK, baby, baby stuff. And all of that stuff is outdoor as you Look at it. Is it is it yep. all outdoor yep. themed? Animals and leaves and yep. OK, the expecting mom. Neutral colors. That was close. New parent. The drinks I'm not getting. But well, there's and the, then the, the hiker, hiker again. And it's the same. And again, it's this the is the same item. And if you were to generate a, a, a similar prompt with with open AI, it would probably give you something kind of similar to this. Dude, it makes sense. This is for Lost Lands. You can hang your stuff. You're right. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um. I want to see. Why are there new spooky options under categories? Okay. They went. They went basic at first. You gotta. You gotta understand that they have to teach. It's probably like a, uh, and it's probably just kind of of a thing that they're plugging into their website, and they're likely having to take small data sets and train it off of their stuff and have humans. Cause that's kind of how it works. It needs humans and interaction at first, and then eventually it'll figure out the nuance, and you can kind of just let it go on its own. I'm just trying to see if it gives the same. I'm just hoping that they never let it fully go wild because it'll just end up being a bunch of copyright stuff. Right. A <laughs> bunch of copyright stuff and people not following the not safe for work policy. So you'll just have a nude feed. Somebody said that the um, sports, something about they did sports, I think, and it gave them a bunch of copyright material. Let's see if we can do that. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can do it. Let's say dad. Dad. And we'll say Father's Day. And is there sports? Games. I don't see sports. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Out, outdoors and games together would be sports, right? Outdoors and games. Sports. Oh, sports. There we go. Okay. Let's, take games off. Okay. Let's see if it gives <laughs> us. Coach Smith. I could see this one catching stuff because you're going to get like sports scenes. Yeah, right there. Yeah. This is all college stuff. So I can I can see that. Okay. So yeah, we do have a couple of copyright things in here. Still no POD though. Let's do let's look into one of these. Um, I mean, those are kind of close. You could probably do some of that stuff POD. Snacks and serving. So lots of lots of copyright material and in music. Sports. There are so many people doing copyright stuff. Yeah. And you know what? I can almost bet as time goes along, they'll probably introduce GPT-4 into their copyright system. Okay. I hope they I hope they train it long enough that the false positives are kept below because there will be false positives, but I'm sure there's like a percentage threshold that it needs to meet before they introduce it. So I'm hoping that the uh, I'm hoping that it's a a, a pretty good threshold i want to try to get it to generate some shirts Ooh. I, did you see that that was strange uh, it's my graphics card let's just do birthday all I right i have it overclocked so sometimes it does weird glitchy stuff per the perfect style let's see if it gives us anything that we can identify as pod yo that airpods case is pretty fire <laughs> let's see fashionista oh all copyright right. Yep, the 90s kid. Okay, so let's see if any of these appear to be... How are they pulling the product into these categories by keywords? Uh, they're using AI. 90s that's, cartoon gifts. That's kind of uh, that's kind of on the nose, isn't it? Well, click open any of these listings and see... Well, this isn't 90s kid, first mm, of all. Yeah, that's, Zootopia that's definitely. That's 2010s. Try again, AI. No. The thing is, are these... Brand information. I'm trying to see if there's anything having to do with the fact that because you can get licensing for stuff, right? Like we do that. Yeah, but not from no. Disney. And that's the thing is this this is new. All of this. 
this could be a vintage seller. Yeah, vintage, vin but still, it's... A lot of this could be vintage, actually, all this, like, old McDonald's stuff. Except the Among Us. Except the Among Us, yeah, I guess. The Among Us. <sighs> all right. Let's... Yeah, there's no, there's unfortunately no avoiding it. This... AI is not perfect, and again, they just rolled this out. So. This looks like it could be P.O.D. Yeah, that's what I said, Hannah. A lot of these are, are vintage. That could be P.O.D. That, that's P.O.D. Those are mock-ups. Mo I have that mock-up. That's P.O.D. We've reviewed shops that use that mock-up, too. It doesn't mean that it's P.O.D., though. They could be printing it. They have it listed as handmade. That's probably why. Um, I wonder. Also, don't report stuff as not handmade or lying about it if you haven't bought it and proved it yourself. Right, because they could <laughs> just be using mock-ups, you know. It could right. be made to order. But a lot of these do look like P.O.D., but I'm definitely not seeing, you know, as much P.O.D. as if we were specifically searching for it. Wow. Okay. What, I, what are you in, 90s accessories? Not, yeah. Ew, look at, look at that old worn-out hat. Looks like somebody peed on it. It's. I mean, maybe people want that. The vintage aesthetic wishbone. I want a 90s vintage Langston Lyons peed on hat. Well, all of these do say vintage. They vintage, do. vintage, vintage. Okay, oh wait, I'm seeing a... Maybe if they use the keyword vintage... That's it, a way to bypass it. Don't, don't, don't. 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 Don't be naughty. Don't do it. Okay, TBH, I kind of want a Poochie keychain. Are you just opening that so you can have it for later? Yeah, I just want to look at it. <laughs> um. Okay, well, very interesting. Oh, God. I love those? it. Yes, I remember those. They still got the tag on them. From back in the day. Okay. So what this... Scoot down. Uh-huh. What were those? What's up? Over here. What are those? I don't... I remember those. What, what are those? Can slam can container seal oh, cap. Okay, slam cans. I don't know what a slam can is. Yeah, we'll look at it later. Can okay. I see your slam can? That's the yeah. That sounds inappropriate. It just definitely does. Yeah. Well, this maybe that's why I got. You know the, the, what you're actually getting when you click on the oh look vintage. Mabel the little said I am pod. All of mine say ham. Am I, am I doing something wrong? Not necessarily because they could be considering no. you no. making the design. Handmade. No, no, no. She's saying that her listings are marked as handmade. You need to switch them over to made with a production partner. You don't want to have handmade on there because that's one of the things that are, is getting shop shut down. Really, I thought if the design was no. still created by hand, that it was no. considered handmade. Because okay. you, you you are working with a production. Partner. Learn something new. So if I x out the filter, <laughs> it applied a filter for vintage, and if I x that out, oh my then. God the s's then it's giving me results that don't have the vintage filter which again is leading to a lot of copyright infringing material like s, Lisa s in the chat if you had a notebook full of those stupid little s's when you were growing up i actually didn't and didn't know what it meant so okay not very much pod though not as much as i thought right and it's it's not it's she not said i do have a production partner listed yeah, you can't have it listed as handmade. You're not well. You're not supposed to. When you choose a production partner, it still shows up as handmade on the listing page. Well, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you have to change it to someone else. Double made verify it. what we're saying. Yeah, double double check it. We don't have ours listed as handmade. Pogs and trolls. I feel oh, no. Yeah, my parents used to talk about pogs and how it would launch them at their heads. I thought it was weebles. Thing. Weebles, yeah, weeble wobbles. Yeah, pogs are little. Weebles yeah. are those giant ones. Yeah, those heavy things that they weeble weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Okay, so I think that we've gotten you know a decent idea. Benefits being for our handmade peeps is that it allows you to stand out as long as you have good SEO and obviously good photos. This is good study material for all of us. Um, if you can kind of narrow down your category, which for a lot of us, you can't. For example, I can't. There's no bookish theme, unfortunately, for me to sift through, and I'm in the bookish niche. But if you can kind of narrow down your own category, like cocktail infusion kits, for example, then you should be able to kind of study what um, some of the, you know, listings that are getting attention by this AI, which ones Etsy is showing us? What do you want? Mythical Kiwi said it's based on oh. the who made it option. If you import from Printify, it uses I did and it should be switched. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Tamagotchis. Yeah. So 
<clears throat> anyway, back to what I was saying is that if you can find your niche in these endless menus and you can sort it out, this is like a good study guide. Like I agree. It and and look at the colors too. You know, a lot there's a lot of trendy colors being utilized in the background. We should switch off a of booze. YouTube doesn't like alcohol. Oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. But um here, we'll do Pisces instead. There you go. And look at the palettes. Like it's it look shifted. Look at the palettes. It shifted to kind of like blues and, and cool tones when we went into Pisces. Very interesting. That's pretty slick. That design. Ooh. <laughs> You're just shopping right now, aren't you? All right. So um Books and Cold Brews listing state handmade. Do they stay handmade? They shouldn't stay handmade. I thought that Michelle Michelle imports all those. We'll double check them today, but they should not say handmade. Um, okay. Again, guys, double check that just to make sure because we're streaming. I'm not going to look that up right now. Right. I, <clears throat> I believe that they're supposed to not say handmade. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and look at this checklist. This is where this is where 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 you come in, Mr. Oh, Morris. Okay. So you guys are going to, I'm, I'm just going to kind of quickly go through this because you guys are going to recognize a lot of this. And it's linked down below if you want to follow along. It is linked down below. And I'm sorry that it's a white screen and there's no, uh, dark there's mode. no dark mode. So you guys are just going to get your eyeballs blasted for a couple of minutes. This is very much just best practices. Make sure you have shop sections that tell what they are. You can generate share and save links for your sections. This is specifically saying to add a shop section for giftable items. I think that's a hint. I think listings that are optimized to be giftable, this here specifically, is telling us that the AI is going to be looking at sections that are meant to be giftable. Again, 100% speculation on something like that, but that's what it sounds like to me. Because Etsy doesn't say, they say sh to make shop sections that represent what the products within the sections are. This one is specifically saying to make sections for giftable items. A section for giftable items. I don't know if that's necessary. However, it kind of sounds they're making it sound like that that's necessary. Maximize your tags, make sure all your tags are filled out. Uh inspire shoppers with keywords like gift for dog mom, teacher appreciation, gifts under $20. This sounds to me like they're saying that if your item looks giftable, in both visible, what they can see in the picture, and in text, probably mostly just text. I would imagine that images are likely just for like categorization, just like what Google does. Gifts under twenty dollars is an interesting tag because I wonder, can somebody pop into the eRank keyword tool? Uh, somebody with a basic or a pro or expert membership, not a free plan, and can you type in gifts under twenty dollars and let me know what the search results for that particular keyword stay? Um, and, and if nobody can do that, I can log in after we stop screen sharing. Also, Irene said, I asked Etsy specifically about that, and they said it is considered handmade if you design it, even if you use a production partner for helping to make it. Again. Well, again, it, it needs to be in their in their seller handbook. Yeah. Well, that we go by what's in the seller handbook, because right. customer service is terrible a lot of the times. I, I could be wrong, but we'll, we'll maybe let me let me double check with some stuff. Let me cook. Yeah, let me let me cook. Let me double check with some stuff because I thought for sure that that was one of the big issues a few months ago when everybody's Printify shops uh, were getting shut down. That also could have just been a glitch. Right. So let me anyway. let me double check and we'll talk about it maybe next week. However, this is another big one. Listing descriptions before. Oh, it is. They sent me a link to the spot in the handbook. OK. OK, cool. Uh, refresh your listings descriptions. Your listing descriptions can help entice, inform, and engage potential buyers. Up until this point, descriptions haven't really mattered. They said that it would matter for SEO to the extent of categorization. So if like it was a debate over red versus blue and someone was searching for a product, somebody else made a red one, you made a blue one, they wouldn't show yours if somebody searched red because in your description you said blue, right? That is what up until now descriptions have meant. I think, and again, speculation, that this is where listings are going to come more into play. Make sure that they lead with a few sentences that naturally incorporate a few relevant words. The AI is going to be looking at all of the text in every description on Etsy at the same time. Is the description easy to read and understand? Again, 
AI is literal. It is going to take your descriptions at face value and that's it. It's not gonna speculate because it can't. Are any key details easy to find and listed clearly? Key details about your product. Size, texture, color, style. Is it mid-century modern? Is it, is it 90s? Right. Is, uh, there, these are all things that we've already discussed in mm -hmm. the video that I have about listing descriptions where Etsy's <laughs> uh, head of search, Andrew Stanton, stated that descriptions are not used for query matching or, or keyword matching. They're used for context to decide how items should be categor categorized based on a user's unique preferences. Think about your descriptions as a way to answer your buyer's questions, prioritizing important information that will help buyers best understand your product. I think buyers can be replaced with AI here. Does it save, does it solve a problem? Does it solve a problem? Yeah. Or appeal to a specific audience. Book talk, bookstagram for me. Those are terms that- You mean you know, like the, the specific categories of people they mm -hmm. put at the top? This is stuff that our description that they told us from the beginning. Yes, to do. So what, but what they're, they're reiterating it upon releasing something that is entirely built upon a generative generative AI that reads text. So they're to, and photography. This is a weird one that I saw that they were putting in here. Choose an eye catching first listing photo. The first photo, the image displayed in uh, search results, is crucial when it comes to inspiring shoppers, quote unquote, to click and increasing your conversion rate. The first photo should clearly show the item that's for sale and be eye-catching enough that the buyers want to take a closer look. So they're telling you that your photo needs to be clear and show what the product is, but also be eye-catching enough that the shoppers see it. Again, I don't know how much the AI is looking at. I don't know how much it's using to actually query these kind of things, but we know that it's looking at photos to an extent because everything seems pretty curated when you're when you're looking at it. So it might not necessarily be like the whole image, but how clear and concise it is and how well it can show. And not only that, but um, a lot of people who are a lot of the drop shippers who sell like cheap crap from Alibaba and, you know, eBay junk, they're getting their listings deactivated and shops shut down because the Etsy's AI, I believe, is noticing that these images are uploaded on other platforms, that they're on these scammy sites. And um, I don't think that it's searching the whole of the internet because obviously that would really suck for people who have their own websites. But I do think that it's cross-referencing <clears throat> things from Alibaba. And that's happened a lot with people who make mm -hmm. handmade products. <clears throat> and then, you know, a, a scam Alibaba seller will steal the real Etsy seller's photos and then the Etsy seller yeah. ends up getting in trouble. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping that over time, AI will get smart enough to deal with that kind of stuff. And word out to all those people who do 100% rely on AI for their Etsy shop. It probably will. Can you drop Just that? Just be link? aware of that. I oh. will. Oh, well, I'll, after we're done, yes. No, it's already. It's down below in the video description. People on mobile can't see that. Yeah, they can. And it, not if they don't drop the chat down. They want to keep the chat open. Uh, it only takes a second. You just okay. Anyway. Uh, use all ten photo slots. This is common sense. However, when we start looking at, they're saying to use listing videos. We start looking here, branding and customer service. Have your about section filled out. Yep, that's Set always... clear return policies. Personalize your packaging. Turn on gift wrapping. Obviously, something that's looking for giftable items is going to prioritize things that have gift wrapping because they're intended to be gifted, right? We don't know how much weight all these things hold. Showcase your customer service. You can see the review averages, all this kind of stuff. I honestly think all of this stuff is going to play into this. If you don't have your entire shop filled out, if you're not utilizing all of the resources that they give you to tell your shoppers that you are a human and that you are making products out of love and with your hands and, and for these people, then the AI is also not going to prioritize you over someone else who, who has filled done something as simple as filling out your about section. You know what I mean? Again, speculation. But it sounds like they're just saying... Put your crap together, and if you don't use everything that we're providing you to give your buyers the best experience, we're going to show other people before you. And right now, it only applies to the gifting section, as far as we know, but who knows how far this could go in the future. So if you have a tool that they're providing you, make sure that it's filled out. There's no reason not to. Global shipping. Yeah, add shipping details, add a zip code, shipping service, processing times. Make yourself more appealing to people that are closer to you. You know what I mean? Offer shipping upgrades for last minute offers, blah, 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 blah. Pricing, price competitively. How to pri They have links for how to price for profit, conversion, and growth. Diversify your price points. Consider discount tools. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna switch back to base. I I think at the end of the day, there was one more. Thing. I know there is. Oh. Uh, I think at the end of the day, this is all common sense stuff, and it sounds like all common sense, but you guys have watched our shop critiques numerous times it's all the stuff we tell you to do and it's literally all the stuff that we tell you to do that a lot of people don't do and if you don't utilize all of the tools and you don't do it in a way that is clear and concise to the customer then this ai that is learning how to be a customer in every industry is going to put you on the back burner and put other people who have done simple things in front of you and, so, and to everybody who i mean there's like a ton of comments about digital products. We don't know. We I, don't know. We again, a lot of this is just speculation. This is me talking out of my butt, but understanding what would be the most beneficial to Etsy for both the buyers and the sellers who put in the hard work, not just the people who upload a couple of listings and then ditch for a week and look at their shop once a week, but people who really care and put hard work and spend time in their shops and optimize their shops. It makes sense that Etsy would want to prioritize those people. So now, I'm assuming it'll apply eventually to digital sellers, but I'm not. And we're not saying that you're that you don't do hard work if you're digital. Like I, the, the way you said that made it. Seem oh like, no, I wasn't referring to. I was referring to Etsy as a whole. I'm not re obviously some digital sellers right. will spend a hundred hours on a single piece of art. And that's right. not what I'm saying at all. Right, but right now, if this is the checklist that Etsy is using and telling us, like you need to do these things, if you got missing checks, they might not have digital in there. I didn't come across any digital. Dig around though. Play with the tool on your own. Yeah. See if you can play around with the prompts enough to generate some digital products just to see. From what we saw, I didn't notice anything digital. And and that's not a it's not necessarily a bad thing because you guys who sell digital, you still have the primary search function, which is the search bar. That's how most people are going to be shopping. They're going to be shopping with the search bar. Um, so obviously, this is still all going to apply to you. You still need to have good SEO. You yeah. still need to have clear photos. You still have to have good descriptions. You know, it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't apply anymore. Um, okay. So the last thing that I wanted to show you is down below in the video description, I've popped in this link, but these are three different virtual events that Etsy's hosting um, in order to get people ready for the, the gift mode. So the first one is uh, on January 31st, mm -hmm. and this is optimizing your shop for gifting. This is on Wednesday, and you have to sign up. It makes you like install this weird like third-party app on your Etsy account to join. Don't be freaked out if it asks you to do that. They've it's always done this. They might sell data because it's a free service, but yeah. I mean... Um, there's one for Google SEO tips, but then there's also photographing your giftable listing. So this one I'm really curious about. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch that. Well, actually, no, I'm not because Final Fantasy VII comes out that day. But you can watch <laughs> it and tell me how it goes. I will. I will watch it. I am watching this one. Um, but definitely sign up for these. Uh, you know, you never know what you're going to learn. This one I'm actually excited for. This is um, Etsy's head of... Uh, this is the guy who's the head of Google search. So there's two head, heads of search. Ratish is the head of Google search or, you know, external search for Etsy. And then Andrew Stanton is the head of Etsy search. So, you know, Etsy SEO. But, you know, you never know what you can learn from checking these out. So definitely join these. But the two that are focused around the new gift feature are the ones on uh, this Wednesday, January 31st, and the one on February 29th. So be sure to sign up for these. I actually just thought, are, are you done? With this yeah, one? yeah, yeah. I actually just thought of an interesting correlation. I sent a message to you because I want to ask Anthony about how this will affect search data. So are these gift things, like if somebody finally clicks on a listing, is that going to apply to like the click-through rate and everything that already exists? And if so, can we watch for a sudden downtick in actual searches across the board other than obviously like digital and stuff? So I think we need to look at that. We need to watch that to see if data, I don't think it's, it's too late in the month for this month though. I I think to see a huge change, but like maybe March compared to February, 
and yeah. see how much of an effect it actually has on searchable data. See, this is how you, you scientifically correlate Well, evidence, even March but... is going to be hard because the, if the Super Bowl is in February oh, God, yeah. and there's going to be a Super Bowl ad, it might, I guess it just depends on how um, how convincing the Super Bowl ad is um, and how successful it is. I guess we'll see. Something interesting for all the people who don't care about the Super Bowl who are stuck watching it, or for those of us who watch it just because the, the ads are hilarious. Yeah, the ads are ads are super funny. We're not. I usually watch compilations after the Super Bowl. I don't watch the Super Bowl because I'm not really into men in tights. Men in tights, only the Robin Hood version. She said, "I checked and I think the searches will only show people who click through to see more." So that's what okay. I was. That's what I was curious about. If Etsy would actually include that in the like the standard part of their. Uh, standard part of like their data and the API or if they would pass that through to like a different sections because I mean it, it really this is going to kind of fog up the whole thing a little bit so is it related to a keyword search though and is it is it that's the keyword... what I'm saying will it will it go against the click-through rate for a keyword even though it's like being found in a completely new and different way can you shuffle I'm things sure back around so it's not so bright yeah I'm sorry it's okay it's so bright oh thank you that's what I get for buying like Nice gaming stuff. I know the monitor is so bright. Fourteen hundred nits, baby. All right. Oh, All right. Much and better. I'm gonna pop out a new tab. I'm gonna stick that up there. So oh, up. thank you. So much better. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, baby. So, uh, down below, if you want to explore um, those articles, I wish that we could tell you more. But that's all we know. We only know what you guys know. Um, as as it comes along, we won't know anything like on the kind of scientific and data side of this, and probably until like the summer, just because it takes. Uh, we need a couple months. Yeah, we need a few months. I need to be able to compare like February to January, March to February, April to March, May to April. Like we need to be able to see like how things actually shift, and even then, it's a lot of it's going to be just speculation. So. <laughs> Heidi, I'm definitely watching that one. Wait, no, Final Fantasy comes out that day. Yeah, that's... It's Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. I'm not going to miss that. <laughs> I pre-ordered it. I got a big 16-inch Sephiroth statue coming with it, too. Get out of here. I'm a nerd. Which is why you should trust me about the data, okay? Oh, it's not that you were military intelligence. Forget that. It's that you play video Anybody games. can do that. <laughs> I don't think that's true. It's not. <laughs> My career field had the highest ASVAB score requirement. Yeah. You uh, had to be a smarty pants. I had to be a dork. You did. It gives us time to change our listings and get them re watch a call it before the Super Bowl. Whatever that means. re watch a call it <laughs> All right. You guys are... I mean, honestly, I'm done on the topic for today. If you guys want to get your questions in, they do not have to be related to the topic at hand. Why is the camera not focusing? They can be about whatever life. They can be about this... Uh, I don't really want to talk about our opinions on AI because at the end of the day, my opinions don't matter and there is nothing I can do to stop it. Yeah, um, we we try to just not touch that topic. But... Yeah, I will say, keep an eye out. AI is probably going to get weird in the next year or two. There was even a guy I saw earlier who was showing how to literally live stream from your phone to Unreal Engine 5 to an avatar that looked like a realistic version of Darth Maul and like his lips and everything moved in real time. It's kind of creepy what AI can do. So just yeah. keep an eye out. Um, also, uh, last Tuesday, I did a great video and like it hardly got any views. Um, I covered some really interesting Etsy SEO questions that I don't think I've answered in the past. A lot of them were about like order of tags and, and things like that. So be sure to check that out. My videos have been performing kind of crappy um and i think it's just because it's january and not very many people are like yeah they have you know everybody's kind of burnt out after christmas um but this upcoming tuesday i am refreshing my how to do etsy seo video it is going to be so good i am working so hard on this video i've been editing it for like five days now it is going to cover my A to Z, and it's going to replace the current how to do Etsy SEO video in the Etsy SE Oodles toolbox. Not very much has changed. I've added um, a couple different like metaphors and things in there, just things to hopefully make it click more. If you watch it and you're like, this is so similar to the one from two years ago, or years ago, it's because hardly anything's changed with Etsy SEO. Um, but the way that I teach it has kind of changed a bit. So if it feels like a refresh, 
that's why it's mostly the same video. I use the same script that I did for my original one as the foundation for the new one, but it's, it's a little bit more fun. Um, so please check that out this upcoming Tuesday. And the Tuesday after that, Mark and I are actually recording it today. Uh huh. We got a $400 Printify sample haul um, for our Crescent City collection that we're about to launch. That we are going to sit right after we're done here today and we're going to do product reviews. Because it might be after lunch. I'm dying. I'm hungry too. <laughs> Some of the products that we got from the Printify sample haul, this time it's like same products that we've ordered in the past from our past sample haul, some of them, the quality has gotten better. Some of them, the quality has gotten worse. So, um, look I'm, out, no spoilers. I'm kind of retracting my statements on some of the things in my last video that I did for Christmas where I'm like, oh my God, these are so great. And we're going to talk about why in that yeah. video too. It's, it's an unfortunate, uh, inevitability. It's, a uh, uh, an issue with small businesses having to rapidly expand mm -hmm. who cannot keep up with demand which is why we always tell you guys make sure that you can if you're going to make huge changes in your shop make sure you if you get just like shouted out somewhere that you can keep up with that that you're mm -hmm. that you can expand your business yeah yeah so keep an eye out for that one um it's going to be fun unscripted it's just mark and i looking at silly stuff um so be sure to hang out for that in not this upcoming tuesday but the tuesday after i'm trying to get ahead and then for those of you who are in the handmade alpha academy this upcoming tuesday at 10 a.m eastern time you guys voted for that yeah you guys voted <laughs> tuesday morning we're doing a private live stream just for HAA students to help you get your DMARC set up, which is for those of you who have mailing lists. So DCAM, SPF, and, and DMARC. DMARC. All, all three. Yeah. Um, so we will talk about what all that means, but if you can't make it live, there's going to be a replay just for HAA students. It'll be located in module five. You're going to get an email at two, around two o'clock yes. today. And then you're going to get another email the morning of the live stream on, on Tuesday morning. So just keep an eye out for it. And if you can't make it, no biggie. Yes. Um, you can always catch the um, replay. Also for any of you who are looking into that stuff, thinking about email verification and being, uh, paranoid about it. Reading through Google and Yahoo's statements on their changes to spam, it's only going to apply to bulk senders. So if you send less than 5,000, it's not an average. If you send less than 5,000 emails in a day, you probably don't have to worry about it. And that's straight from Google. But, but Yahoo's saying something kind of different. I didn't see anything really? in, uh, yeah, we her thing, she said that, but I didn't see anything of that in in her in her video or in the Yahoo statement at all. Regardless, HAA students, if you're using email marketing, like better safe than sorry. It's just yeah. something you got to set it's, up. It's, it's an inevitable uh, inevitability. It's going to have to happen anyway. It's it's basically multi-layered authentication for your email where it has to pass checks so somebody can't spoof your email address. It can happen to you if you send less than 5,000 emails a day, and either way, I know it is 5,000 emails a day because even Yahoo in their terminology, they use the term bulk senders. Okay. So for most of you, it's not going to matter that much initially. It is uh, pretty much on the high end of having to understand like the back end of your website or the back end of your, like your DNS stuff, but it's not that hard to do once you get there. We're going to show you our representation of it. Also, speaking of that, if you guys didn't get uh, our email on Tuesday <laughs> uh, and you use Apple products, it's because you use Apple products, unfortunately, because we were testing this email authentication stuff to show you guys. And for some reason, Apple didn't like it. We had 264 soft bounces on our email and every single one of them was was Apple. But we should be fully authenticated. Because now. the email we sent today only had six soft bounce, and it's probably just because you guys didn't pay your server fee, the six of you. Yeah. Um, um, Kara asked, how much is HAA? It is $997 or six payments of $199 for six months. But we will not even be open again until June 14th. Yes. Um, but you get... 12 months of E-Rank Pro with that. You get lifetime support and things like this from me. Like when an emergency happens, we make sure that yeah. you guys do everything that you need to do. And that's forever. I was so. I was so stressed about having to teach this email authentication stuff and then found out that it's not going to matter for like 99% of you. So if you're somebody who has less than 5,000 people on your email list, come and join, watch it, do it if you want to, if you think you're confident enough. If not, just save your money for a while until you get to a point where you need to do that and pay somebody to do it for you. 
Yeah. I, and a lot of your guys' domain hosts will do it for you. Yeah, just I, I think that if you're making money from your email list, you should be setting it up. Like if, That's if it's, true. If it's the primary source of income for you and you don't want to risk one day sending out an email for a collection launch and potentially not having anybody see it, yeah. just well, set it up. The, 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 the only... And we'll talk about this again in the stream. The only reason I'm hesitant with a lot of people that aren't technologically savvy is that you can put your email on block lists if you do it wrong. If you send out emails, you can get stuck on block lists. And it's it can be sometimes very hard, if not completely impossible, to remove yourself from some of those. So I, I have to grain of salt. We're not liable if you get banned because you did it wrong. Yeah. We're, we're, <laughs> we're just showing you how we do it for hours and nothing beyond that. And we'll not be providing support at all <laughs> for it. So right. anyway, moving on, we got some questions we can go ahead and get to. Somebody said, uh, glad how Mark, how caffeinated Mark is. I don't think that's it. I just think that I'm so delusional from having fever dream nightmares all night that I'm just. <laughs> He's like, there were talking animals in my dream I last don't, night. I don't dream. Once a month, maybe I'll have a dream that I can remember. Last night was just straight fever dreams, like animals talking to me. I bet it's because we watched BoJack before we went to bed. We did watch that's BoJack. That's probably what it is. <laughs> Which is but it was real. Animals. It was straight up fever dreams. Anyway, your thoughts with using AI to help us with descriptions. We've covered this in the past. Uh, all for it. If you're not somebody who's good with proof, if you're not good with like writing, proof out, yeah. If you're not if you're not good with that kind of stuff, it can be great. Uh, if you're using the free version, the three point five, I wouldn't just take what it gives you at face value. Well, we have it at E rank. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have it at E rank too. I totally forgot that. Um. Either way. Don't take it at face value. Don't take what it gives you and immediately stick it in your listing description. Make sure you read through it. You curate it. Make sure that it, for one, is factually accurate because that's one thing that it can really goof. It can add little details about maybe something that it does or something that it looks like or a detail it might have. And it might just stick a tiny little thing at an end of a sentence and then you end up with a bad review because it said something that it isn't. So read through it. Turn it into your own words the best that you can. It's really good if you're bad with grammar and spelling, especially with AI reading descriptions and things. If you got bad grammar, it's probably not going to think that you're very good at what you do. So, and, and that's not coming from me. That's just computers are terrible at, at nuance. Um, so yeah, we're, we're I'm fine with it. Oh. Thoughts on packing material for digital items. Etsy allows for more than one file to be attached to a listing. One file for the download, the other labeled optional to connect with us, etc. Um, That's... I, that's completely up to you. Do you want to add something for your social media? Do you have an email list that you could add on there? Do you want to just make it a little thank you, thank you note to the to the customer? Are there specific instructions that they need to follow? Um, it, it, it's completely up to you how you decide to utilize it. Maybe you put all you know some little QR codes for your social media accounts. There's a lot of ways that you could use it. Kara just depends said, on your objective. Kara said you pay 1K or you in for life. You, you're in yes. for well, you're in for like uh, like everybody else, life, our life and our <laughs> and our ability to pay for the website. If it gets to a point where like the economy completely dies and we're in another depression and can't pay for the website, obviously it's not guaranteed for that. So it's l life within common sense. Right. We're we're young. <laughs> we're in our early 30s. We're a not lot can happen by the time we retire. As long as as long as war doesn't break out, you know, please don't try to sue us in the midst of gonna, a war. You see me <laughs> on the front line with a modem trying to update HAA. <laughs> yeah, please. That's probably not going to happen. You know, but we have to throw in those disclaimers because we don't want to get sued in the middle of a world war or something. Yeah. Uh, stupid question here. There's no such thing. Only stupid people. Uh, <laughs> which you are not one. Uh, I have never been able to upload pictures for my banner because it tells me to resize the photos. Uh, I haven't been able to do that. How do I get the photo resized to fix to fix it? That sound, so there are, I actually have talked to somebody. Okay. If you are positive that your photos are not the wrong size. There is a bug that several Etsy users have experienced. I've been I've talked to one guy who has never been able to add a banner to his shop and he's got a, a very successful shop. He just can't add a banner. And he's been talking to Etsy support and over the last few years, not days, not weeks, not months, but years, they've told him that oh, we're working on it. We're working on it. And he still can't add a banner. 
you, you're going to have to reach out to Etsy support if you're confident that you're getting the the size of the banner correct or you've tried different sizes, Yeah, you know? Um, and not just the size, but the actual correct, like, aspect ratio of what's supposed to be there. Yeah, so... If you stick a square in a rectangle, it'll never be a rectangle. I mean, start by experimenting. Uh, go to Canva and look at their Etsy banner templates and toss something together in their template and, and stick it in there because that should fit. It might not fit at full resolution if you don't have Canva Pro and you can't size it all the way. But um, if you've got a freak... I mean, at least it would be something, even if it's a little bit blurry those should fit every time. If that doesn't work, then you're likely one of the few unlucky sellers who has that bug. You're going to have to reach out to Etsy support about it, um, which yep. really sucks because the guy I've talked to, the the seller who has emailed me about it, he was asking me if he should start a whole new shop. And he already had a like, decent amount of sales in the shop without the banner. And I told him, eh, it's probably not that important, especially since you've already got listing quality scores and a customer marketplace experience score. Kind of weird to start from scratch just to have a banner. Banners are very important for building brand perceptions, though. It's just how important is it when you've already got the authority, you know? What's for lunch? Oh, I don't know. Me, because I'm a snack. Um, I don't know. Yo, you a whole meal, baby. Thank you, baby. I pre Thanks, baby. Thanks, baby. Um, I don't know. What What do you want for lunch? Literally anything. I'm so hungry. I am too. Is the new gift thingy going to be rolled out everywhere? I don't know if I read or heard that it's only going to be tested in the USA, Britain, and Australia, and somewhere else. I'm in Ireland. I have no idea. Is Do you not have it yet? Yeah. Every, it's there now for if you guys... Does anybody not have it? <laughs> and it's if you look on your phone... Hold on, I'll... Sh let me double check that it's in the same place that it was when I looked earlier. Yeah, if you're looking from mobile, it'll be the app directly in... Hold on a minute. So it says gift mode, gift mode, and it'll be right here in the middle, center button. It looks like a little present. So everybody run and check and let me know if anybody doesn't have it. But I'm, I haven't heard anyone say that it's not that it's going to be for specific locations can you explain more about the third app that etsy directs you to to register for the training I've yeah seen it got worried and didn't register i asked etsy help about it and they didn't know where it, what no, it was no that's i they make you install a it's a plugin for your etsy account um and it's completely normal. It's just the plugin that they use because they do their events, like their Etsy events in private, like little rooms almost. Um, and that just allows you to access it. It's safe. It's it's from Etsy. Um, it is an Etsy event, and that's just the app that they use for it. So it's safe to go ahead and, and install. Will AI learn and understand your searches to show you new items you didn't see on reoccurring visits? I'm not I have sure. I have no idea. Good question. However, that's an extremely ineffective way to market, which is exactly why Facebook, when you see an ad, if you stop and hover over it for a certain period of time, it's more likely to reshow you that ad because you were considering it. So yep. as a platform that wants people to buy to get their money, I'm going to say it's probably going to do the opposite. I think it's going to be more like social media to where like if you talk about something and you see an ad and you, you not even click on it, but if you just kind of hover over that area, <laughs> things that are in that area are probably going to get showed to you more. Remember this. Remember this. Remember, I will purposefully, if I see an ad for something that I'm interested in, but I'm not ready to buy it, I will click that ad and like scroll around it and then click off so that I get the ad again, but also so that I get other brands that are similar. That way I can compare prices. <laughs> My husband keeps having dreams about Putin. I mean, if you've seen the pictures of him like five, ten years ago without a shirt on on horseback, you have. Are you kind of a good looking guy for his age? Please. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, all the terrible, awful atrocities aside, he's a. That doesn't seem to prevent ninety nine point nine percent of people with getting with the people that they get with. You are so uh, right, you evil, evil right. man. He's got eight kids with eight different women and is in jail. 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah. Uh, so once you pay the 1K, are you in for... Oh, well, you I, already read I already that. read that. <laughs> you guys are yes. right. I am caffeinated today. Uh, uh, I just had to change mine because it said matte black finish. Chose to just describe it that way, but I changed it for adding my listing. Oh, the descriptions. Yeah. Uh. Oh, no. Chat jumped. Why? Okay. There are hardly any questions, so it's fine, and which is fine because we're almost done. Release the best. 
release the bats. I, the spooky bat war is coming. Spooky I, bat war. Don't, don't be spooked about the whole World War thing. It's not that big of a deal. Just do what that one guy did. Was it World War One or World War Two? That British guy that just like ran at the soldiers with a broadsword and no shirt on and they ran screaming because they thought he was a demon. <laughs> Great advice. Google that guy. What? It's a fascinating story. The German, the, oh yeah, it was World War II. The Germans actually thought this guy was a demon because he went into war with a bow and a broadsword. What? What is spicy? What did you say that was spicy? I don't even remember. When I said that you were a, oh. whole, a whole meal. Oh, got it. And it's true. For the bats. Oh, that sounds so good. Let me tell you guys something funny. <laughs> For the bats, Mark... When we watch Batman, we can, we actually can't watch Batman. It turns into just comedy hour. Because... <laughs> what? When we try to watch Bat Batman, he just every, t every time... He jumps off a building and flies a wee. We she, I don't know why she thinks it's so funny, but she loses it every time. Because it's so serious. You know, the movies are so serious. And then Batman will jump off a roof and Mark will just go, wee. <laughs> I lose my mind every time. Oh my God, carne asada fries. That does sound pretty fire. We just had tacos yesterday, but we might have to get tacos. Did we have today. tacos? We did. We, we sure had did. Rusty Taco yesterday, didn't we? And that sounds super inappropriate. I promise it's a real restaurant. Rusty Taco? Oh, yeah. yeah it's it a real restaurant. Uh, what do you think about shop that's selling digital things from the internet that has IP? I saw they get 15K plus sales more than I did for three years. Not your circus, not your monkeys. You mm -hmm. cannot. You can't report them. Only the IP owners can report them. Not your circus, not your monkeys. They're not your competitor. Um, they're probably going to get in trouble eventually. Don't fixate on it. Ignore them. It's wasting your time and it's not serving you at all. There is nothing that you can learn from somebody who's breaking the law. Just the same as there might be a guy, you know, down the street who does hardcore drugs in his basement. Not your circus, not your monkeys. Just Unless you like to party. Just, just because he's doing drugs in his basement doesn't mean that he's doing them legally. Doesn't mean that he's not eventually going to get caught, you know, so just, yeah. Is there a, uh, any way to do a bundle of products, like buy five different products for X dollars without doing a store discount code? Um, the only way that you could do it is if you set it up in your variants and it wouldn't be different items unless it was like, it would be very difficult. Let's just put it that way. You you technically and could... that's And that's too complicated for the technically abled customer. Yeah, unfortunately, it would be really difficult because you'd have to like set each variant, like, you know, package one, package two, package three, pack, and then have all the different ones um, listed. It, it would be hard. I wonder if it'll ever notify you if you've purchased this item before. I've ordered doubles, triples, even so many digital items I didn't realize I already purchased. That's interesting. I mean, triples of the Nova. What? Triples of the Nova. He said he was scared of him, Putin, uh, but forced to share a bed with him and his mother. No funny, but what? That was the dream? That is the most unhinged thing I've ever heard. He shared a bed with Putin. Was it fun, at least? What a strange dream. What a strange dream. Miranda, you, you should call the police. <laughs> Don't eat the mushrooms growing on the wood chips in the backyard. They make you see weird things. <laughs> Okay. Did you see the comment on of the, the gifts under 20 keyword search and what do you think? Um I yeah, I did. It's interesting. Um here's the thing, data is key here and obviously we don't have a lot of data right now. So I'm a big fan of experimenting. You know, we can all probably sacrifice one of our tags. I mean, 13 tags is a it's hard to fill out 13 tags, right? I'll experiment with it. Um, we're launching our new collection on Monday. I will add in some tags related to gifts under 20 for some of our stickers, you know, just to see. Um, and maybe I'll report back in a few months. But it's going to take, like I said, it's going to take several months to collect enough data to even be able to say if it works. But we, we probably all have enough space to experiment with an extra tag. So try it out. Do you guys like hibachi? If so, what's your order? I'm craving it so bad. I haven't actually gotten hibachi hibachi in a minute, but like fried rice, extra fried rice, extra of both sauces on the side. Uh, I usually go for like shrimp, scallops, and filet mignon. I just, I just, I'll eat any of it. I usually get, I usually get steak. Um, mm -hmm. And a connie salad on the side. Got to have a connie salad. Oh yeah, that fake, that fake crab. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, the gift thing is on the seller app, question mark. I only see a blurb about it in the shop advisor section. No, it's on the buyer app. This is a tool for buyers. This has, it really doesn't have anything to do with sellers. Um, mm -mm. That's why I said, uh, you know, everybody was freaking out about it. I think in reality, as long as your listings are set up and don't look like crap, you'll probably be okay. Which is, you should be doing anyway. You know, hopefully everybody's yeah. working to make as their a, listings look good. Make sure all your shop sections are filled out. Make sure that you have, you know, your, your, uh, what are they called? the shop, actual shop sections of products filled out. Um, get, I mean, I mean, really, that's it. Make sure your descriptions are are readable. If they're not readable, E-Rank's got an AI tool that can help you, you know, piece that together. And that's probably going to be it. Make sure that, again, like you should be doing, your main photo that shows up in search should be, you could tell what the product is, with the background clear enough that now, hopefully, an AI can tell what it is, but still dressed up enough in the photo that... It's stylized. It's stylized, and it makes people want to click on it. I know that sounds like a lot of completely different things, and that's because it is, because taking photos is an art, and this is a platform <laughs> for artists. So, so I mean, it really, if phones are good enough. Any any kind of phone is good, you know. The, he he went to the dark side, y'all. Unfortunately, for business optimization, Apple. I hate them. I hate this company. I hate them as a company. I think they are terrible anti-consumer. However, their software is significantly he, better. He will not shut up about how much he loves that phone. I love this thing, and I hate <laughs> the company so much. All these years, he's been telling you guys how much he hates Apple. I hate them so much. He loves. The you know phone. what though? These little AirPod things. They're pretty great. <laughs> Hate the company. Anyway. Ashley, I, I love this question. Oh, you lost it. There it goes. What do you guys think about those bling ketchup bottles and other household items? I recently just discovered them and was in awe at the sales so, for them. So you can't sell them. Um, <laughs> it's technically, I mean, it's IP, It's definitely IP violation. Um, I think it's very strange. I don't know who's buying these things. I, I had, remember the blinged out Febreze bottle? Yes. Yeah. You can't sell that stuff. You, yeah. It's it's not it's not legal to sell it. It's just who's the market for this? Who's buying blinged out ketchup? I don't know. Um, I personally think it's very odd because to cover an entire bottle in Swarovski or what's the other one? Pre Pre Precioso, whatever they're. I don't know the other crystal company. That would be so expensive. So you would have to sell them for so much. And yeah, mm -hmm. people are buying them. It's I don't know. I, I don't understand it. I'm not going to attempt to understand it, but it's John, very strange. Johnny asked what software, specifically the camera software, because this camera, which is two generations, what is this? maybe three generations. These are, this is the S22 Ultra, Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, Ultra, two generations older, more than twice the megapixel count on this camera. This camera looks like it's five times the megapixels of this camera when I post them on the internet. Also being able to shoot in RAW and slap them into Lightroom, which I do for all of my photos, takes me like two minutes. I have like a $50 bundle of uh, Lightroom presets that I bought, slap those on them, adjust them to make them look right, and I have like Hollywood quality photos in a couple of minutes. It's kind of ridiculous how much better the software is, especially with the megapixel count. I think it's 48 megapixels, and this one is 100. It's kind of weird how much better the software is. That specifically is what I like it for. Also, um, ease of use, being able to just slap something open and it just works. I haven't had to configure or do anything weird with this phone since I got it. Everything just works. Um, for the gift for AI, would I need a tag such as Mother's Day gift or gift for her? Not, nece not necessarily, but again, we don't know. We don't yeah. know. We don't know how deep. I'm sure it would help, but I wouldn't go changing all of your tags and keywords just yeah. to fit this thing. Keep your stuff how it is. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't obsess over it. If you're listing something new and it's almost Mother's Day, like maybe you know, if you've got yeah. the room for it, sure. Um, I probably won't answer any more questions about this topic specifically, just because we only know what they posted in the things. I don't know anything beyond that and anything else is speculation. So I'm just going to let other questions about it go. Yeah, that's, I mean, you know, the, the will you be able to save your AI searches? Not right now, but... Uh, but we don't know. Right, we don't know, unfortunately. Uh, if you have a store-wide sale and also a coupon, will Etsy let customers combine them? No, no. It's whichever one takes the highest percentage off. Yeah, whichever one's the bigger sale. Extra rice and extra sauce. I mean, if you're already going to be eating a ridiculously large meal that you can't eat all of, you might as well eat until you throw up, right? Like, <laughs> that is not good advice, Mr. Yeah. Moore. That's literally what buffets are for, and they're the most popular restaurants everywhere in the U.S. Then so. why do we only have one? 
We only have a Golden Corral. You know because what? Because COVID killed the buffet. You're right. Anyway. I don't want. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I really don't want to eat food that everybody's That's a, that, coughed that on. Could be, that could be a fun cover song. COVID, COVID killed, killed the buffet. buffet. Mm-hmm. Uh, from a post in the Alpha Group, what do you think about adding supply section to your shop? As a handmade seller, we often have extra supplies left. Would you say make a new store or section? I think it completely depends on what you sell and who your target audience is. Something feels a little bit weird about selling the supplies you use to make your products to your customers. Or even if, you know they're, I mean? if they're supplies completely unrelated to your niche or your industry, it's not very professional. It's kind of like, here's all this crap I've got laying around my house I don't need anymore. Yeah. I would save that stuff for like Facebook group, sales group groups, Facebook marketplace. Um, you could start another shop, a supply shop if you wanted. Uh, you could sell it on a resale site like Mercari. Um, but I, I wouldn't list them in your Etsy shop unless you already sell like craft supplies. It's just, it kind of, imagine if Tiffany and co sold like, you know, all their spare, you know, junky jewelry parts that they don't need anymore. It'd be kind of weird. Don't put a hate out there. Not doing any good to anyone. It's a four letter word. What? I agree with that. Sure. I don't know. I don't know what hate I put out there, but did you put hate out there? I, apparently, I put hate out there. No. Uh -huh. No. I there's a lot of things I hate. Would you? Oh, Apple. Is it? Was it the Apple that you hate? Apple. Oh yeah. They deserve to be hated. Oh They're yeah. A they deserve. Company. Yeah. They've relied on slave labor like every other cell phone distributor out there for a, a really long time, and they're anti-consumer. They're they're anti-fix it bull crap their inability to to get parts to fix things on your own planned obsolescence planned their... obsolescence which by the way they were found guilty of which is why your cell phones also now have a USB-C port because they lost a, a a monopoly lawsuit as well they are they have they're a good company to hate <laughs> um uh, Christina yeah go away sorry uh uh, what is the best place to source and mock up photos that have colors that will exact match Printify's color tees besides black and white? I don't want bad reviews, thanks. So it needs to be the exact same brand. That's kind of the the big um, thing is that you need to make sure that it's the same brand. There are Etsy sellers that will do it and you can search based on the exact product. Like if you're selling, for example, a Bella Canvas, like I can't remember all the the numbers that go with them, but for example, this is the neutral the color neutral in Bella Can or natural, natural in Bella Canvas, you can search the exact one that you need. And there are usually Etsy sellers that make them. That's an option. Or um, sometimes place it, you can get the exact types of products. Place it is a little bit shaky because some people I think got their listings deactivated for using place it mockups. We use a couple in our shop just for some of the colors that we didn't buy. You know, we get samples of everything, but sometimes we don't have a color. Um, and we haven't had any issues. So place it's been fine for us, but that that's what I would that's what I would do. How do you guys not have a million subscribers? You're both awesome and I enjoy your content. Because we don't do clickbait content like here's the top ten things to sell on Etsy to make twenty five thousand dollars in a week. We just did a huge, I, I had some major imposter syndrome a few days ago. We went through like all of the other Etsy YouTubers and dug into their channels because I'm like, what am I doing wrong? And then I realized a lot of them aren't really getting that many views for the number of subscribers that they have, whereas and, we're getting decent views for the subscriber yeah. numbers. So. And the only videos that they're doing that are doing exceptionally well are clickbait things like, here's how I made $100,000 in a week, or here's the things that you should sell to make money, or here are the items that are trending that you should sell. Like, it's all that. <laughs> Garbage. Garbage, useless stuff for people who want to make a quick buck. Uh... uh... You can have a shipping icon, Etsy icon, Etsy coupon, and I think a sh uh, shop sale coupon on one sale. Yeah, their ecosystem, Apple's ecosystem is pretty wonderful. I'll be getting a MacBook for my music here soon, just to be able to travel and not lug my 200 pound computer around. And yes, it is about 200 pounds. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. It's all steel and glass. Uh. Would you, when making a new listing, would you use tags like gift for her, gift for mom? You you yeah. should use tags that are related to your product. Don't yeah. just put them in there in hopes that the AI is going to pick you because unfortunately it's going to be smart and it's going to know if you're trying to spoof it. They actually said in their thing to make sure that you are not keyword stuffing yeah. because it is going to ignore keyword but stuffing. What they're saying is for tags, focus on tags that most accurately describe what your item is. And then if you have some leftover ones, feel free to... 
top it off with some of those gift terms. You know, that's how I do my listings. I, I'll, when I'm out of ideas and I have found every good keyword that could possibly describe my items. Um, for example, you know, this is, I, we are officially licensed by Sarah Maz. She's got a new book coming out this Tuesday. So we're launching our Crescent City collection on Monday. And there's only so many words related to, you know, this author and this book series, right? So then I start doing like gifts for you know, readers, uh, bookstagram gifts, things like that. This channel is where you go when you want honesty and respect and are ready Aww, to do it right. We appreciate we you, we love Ashley. You guys. We, so we really sweet. do try to give that off. I know sometimes I can, uh, I can be a little bit aggressive, but. I think that people just misinterpret because be he was in the military and he's got that sharp bite. And I promise I will never speak to you in a negative way. And I will ne never like intentionally try to make someone feel lesser i speak literally and i don't cover up anything with nuance that tries to cover it up because that's a waste of my time and your time yeah he's, he's i don't waste my time he's blunt because that's kind of how you have to be and he was in the military for a long time and he it took him if you guys watch our old live streams i could, was a, i was an actual jack <laughs> for a while well because you were still you were learning to be a civilian after you, he, he was 19, joined the military. And then in, in those essential ages, when you find out who you are, it was the military shaping who he was. And you see it in our old live streams. And now he's like coming into himself and finding, you know, that positivity and realizing who he is without that. And I really, really appreciate everybody who's just kind of patient because it's anybody- called growth, y'all. Anybody who has had a family member in the military, I mean, you know how hard it was. And he had to do some really, you know, stressful things. So I also have severe ADHD with a fixation issue, and it causes me to kind of go into things a little hard. Uh, I've been found mostly from my YouTube channel slash Facebook group. I okay. want to work on having Etsy do more work for me. That makes sense. What should I start with first? Titles, keywords, or adding a video to each listing? Oh, SEO for sure. SEO for sure. However, if you have things that are selling, please don't touch them. You can yeah. you can update your photos. That's probably fine for now. We should uh, keep an eye on that for the AI thing to see whether or not that affects that at all. Yeah. They're not really. There probably really isn't a way to correlate that, even if it is true. I wish this thing. Yeah, was Kara. Sense. The thing is, the the having listing videos doesn't contribute to how you are ranked in search. Um, it, it's all about you know. Obviously, you have to have a good product that people mm -hmm. want, but making sure that if people can't find you, they can't buy your stuff. In fact, that's how I start my video that's going to be posting on Tuesday. So my suggestion, uh, Kara, is to go down below and get my free Etsy SE Oodles toolbox because that's like A to Z, all of the things that I think are most important for, for Etsy SEO as somebody who is a manager at the world's largest Etsy SEO company. Um, and then on this upcoming Tuesday, I'm actually refreshing the second video in that toolbox, and I'm updating my strategy for Etsy SEO for 2024. It's going to be very similar, um, but keep an eye out for that because the video in that will be updated. It'll also be posted to my channel, um, but that's definitely where you want to start. Yeah. I think we're about there, dog. I well, do appreciate all the love, guys. I, I really do. It, it does help. You guys probably don't see it. I mean, I even still dress kind of gothy or goofy a lot of the times, but I do spend most of my time in like a kimono, no undershirt and parachute pants walking out like I'm kind of I'm kind of a hippie <laughs> yes, now, which is such great. A hippie. It, it, um, it does really help with life, you know, coming from a spot where like celebrating my successful KIAs, you know, they're on like my official like reports of how many people got hurt or worse due to actions like it, it can mess with you for a little while and it does take some time but i do appreciate all the love it definitely does help and it helps be more positive yeah i mean every this this is all part of that that growth that everybody kind of has to go through mm -hmm. and he's a completely different person than he was um you know a couple years ago when when he first got out and it's i think that it's a good lesson for everybody you know nobody's we were so young you know, we were so young. And even when he got out of the military, we were still young. When we started this channel, yep. we were young. I mean, f for a lot of you, we're still young. We're in our early 30s. Um, and think back, you know, if you're if you're older than we are, think back to who you were when you were 25. Were, were you, you know, the same person you are now? Probably not. So I did want to... Picks, picks or it didn't happen. Pretty sure that's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure I can't... Uh... 
Well, I mean, my my EPRs I could post, but I'm not going to do that because why would I want you to know that much about me? Right, right. I you... was a POS at 25. Everybody is. I know. I wasn't. <laughs> I was in their own way. I I was here making YouTube videos, and I already didn't like who I was. But before, you know, okay. Thanks for the love. We're we're done with questions and stuff. If you guys are going to bounce, I appreciate you guys staying here and hanging out. But we're past question time. Yeah, so. I just I wanted to ask you guys something while I've got you know over three hundred of you here. Yeah. Mark and I we spent the week deep diving other Etsy influencers, and here's the thing. All of the coaches, I won't say all because I still love Pam Duthie. I still love Christina Nicole. Um, there are good coaches in, in this industry. I'm not saying that all coaches suck. I hope you guys don't ever think that. But you guys know the ones, you know what bugs me in this industry and it bugs you too. She was talking about the kimono stuff for the pics. Oh. I thought you were, I thought you were wanting me to post my EPRs. <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. There's a lot of PII on there. Go to my my anyway. in, my uh, Instagram account, Starla K. Moore. That's my personal one. And you can see our pictures from Lost Land yeah, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you want to see Festival Mark. But anyway, um, w what I'm getting at, though, is that we did a deep dive of some of the competitors that you guys have told us that you don't like. <laughs> Um, and maybe it wasn't the best way to go about it, but I was going through some of the competitors that you guys have said in the past that you've gotten like bad advice from. And I really wanted to dissect like what makes them so popular when the advice that they're giving, like if you Google them, you don't hear positive things. So what is it that makes them so appealing? A lot of them had professional or professional video editors, which I edit all my own videos. I think they look pretty professional. But History in a corporate marketing environment. So their videos are less... buzz. They look like BuzzFeed videos. Yeah, they they look you know? like corporate BuzzFeed videos. And, um, you know, I, I I went through this, like, I don't know. We were sitting here and I almost had, like, a panic attack. I was going through a crisis thinking, like, I don't want to be that. What? Do I got to be that to get, you know, the the audience that they have? And then, you know, I was thinking about it. We talked to Michelle, who is the one who I run the Etsy shop with. She's, she's also our VA. She's our VA. She is the editor for my book. She works at E-Rank. She's amazing. We love you, Michelle. I'm sure she's probably watching the replay. Um, but I asked her, "Do I, should I just be doing exactly what I'm doing? Am I perfect? Or is there something that I don't know that I should be doing? Because I always want to do better. And I'm trying to figure out, like, what's better now? How do I get better? And, you know, we did this. And now I'm starting to feel like maybe this is contributing to our lack of views because maybe this looks too professional. Maybe it doesn't look like a home. And Michelle said maybe that's it. You know, you guys don't see bubbers anymore, but the lights were bothering his eyes on his cat tree. Which is why we quit putting him back there because it's not good for him. But, but you know, oh, you just... guys you guys don't see bubbers anymore. It doesn't look like a wall in our house. I mean, it is our house. This is There's a whole studio back there behind that wood thing. Um, and I, I just worried that maybe it feels too much like a game show set. So we were thinking like we were thinking about changing the lights, making it maybe putting some plants. Um I or, mean I don't even have to do anything. Let's just Yeah. Or or is it you know, is it perfect how it is? And we're just slow growing because it's January or am I not covering the right topics? Are you guys sick of hearing me cover the same topics over and over? Um or maybe I'm not covering enough SEO, which is, you know, when I do a, a search in vidIQ, which is my Etsy or my my YouTube SEO tool, the number one thing I'm known for is SEO. Do I need more SEO content? I'm just really trying to figure out, like, am I doing something wrong or am I doing exactly what I need to do? Or is there something that I need to improve on? Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to teach you guys something I've never done. Um, Michelle had said, you know, oh, a lot of the content that's doing well right now is, you know, digital and Canva templates and stuff. I don't do that. I don't sell those things. I'm not qualified to teach you that stuff. I'm not going to research something and learn how to do it just so I can regurgitate what I've you know, just learn from someone else. It does, it's very disingenuous. How does natural sunlight appearance look compared so, to regular? I don't, it's not as fun. I don't think it's very fun. You know, that's the thing. We could throw like potted plants and things back here to make it feel more like a home. Like what, what do you guys want? Not like video topics and stuff like that. That's always going to be us coming up with that kind of content. But like, what do you guys want from us now that you guys who are clearly not here for the questions and actually care to just watch, what do you want from us as a channel? 
Yeah. From her, particularly on like Tuesday videos, but me also here. Somebody said yuck. Yeah, see, I'm not a big fan of the, the I mean, it's cool, but like this isn't us. Yeah, bring bubbers back. I can't do that as long as these backlights exist. And unfortunately, backlights have to exist because it actually makes us look like crap when, they, when they're not there. So some kind of light has to be. Yeah, I like crystals. What defines better for you? More subscribers, larger loyal community, more monetization, more notoriety. I don't give a crap it's, about monetization. So it's a blend. Yeah, we don't really care about monetization. That's going to come with more subscribers and more views anyway. However, a larger community would be nicer. I don't. We don't really want exponential growth because we can't keep up with it because this does directly coincide with Handmade Alpha Academy sales. Growth is nice. We have to survive and existing subscribers most of the time aren't going to be people who buy into that. So that's our that's our main bit well, of living. My my big objective is I'm looking at people who are giving legitimately bad, harmful and sometimes even illegal advice. A lot of illegal advice. And I'm looking and I'm looking at them and thinking, why are so many? And, and I really just my goal is always to do better than the people who are telling you guys things that could hurt you. You know, that's I want to give good advice and I want to reach as many people as possible, just like you guys want to sell good products and you want to get them in front of, you know, the most people that you can. Um, so that to me, it, it's not even about, I don't care about the money, the monetization. I don't really care about the n n notoriety. Um, the loyal like community this. is always great. I love, you know, having that loyal community, but I also don't want to exist in an echo chamber where I'm never able to actually take any constructive feedback. If you give me crappy feedback where I I'll just block you, <laughs> right? I had somebody who commented a few days ago and they said, this channel is getting so disingenuous. And I'm like, I don't understand where that comes from. Like why? I feel like we're the opposite of disingenuous. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I keep being you. Oh, geez. Like I general, I, I do want to read. I do want to hear, you know. Yeah, holy crap. This really jumped. There's a lot of comments. Can okay. you do a game show? Can you do a game show? We've done things like that in the past. Ouch. We have a couple. Doesn't feel like a game background to me. I think it's your own style. I, I do think dressing up the background and I think pulling the camera out more and being able to show more of us. The camera would have to go this way more because there's just open room that way. Yeah. Um, but I think if we were to get the camera over a little bit and actually open up the entire area a little bit more, make it feel more personal. Uh, it looks like your style. Uh, yeah, we, we love, love, we genuinely love our community and that's how we tell our, our families as well. Oh, yeah. We we constantly brag about you guys to love our families. Your, I love your trend spotting vids. Yeah, we like those too. We just can't do them all the time. Right. We and don't want any one particular style of content to be ours because then it does start to get disingenuous. Things that matter start to get left behind or put to the side that should be up front. I think it's nothing you guys are doing wrong. I think it's the hard sell the other coaches provide sucks, sucks people, people in until they start to feel used in car sales, which unfortunately, and we're not going to name names, but you watched what that turns into with one of our older competitors slash friends, friends who completely crashed and burned because they overdid it. Yeah. Uh, what does I, that, I read yeah, that we, we one. did that whole one. Keep being you bring bubbers back. Uh, the only thing for growth that I can think of is more shop critiques. Those are super duper draining. And because you have to consider a lot of the times we're saying the same thing over and over and over. And I know that for a lot of people is probably beneficial, but it also makes the content boring and actually starts to drag down. Yeah, um, I am after we do, I'm like smiley on camera, but when we leave our shop critiques, like especially after critique week, I usually have to take some time off. I don't know why, I think it's draining because Again, it's it's saying a lot of the same things over and over again, but I can't let my face relax because then I start sounding like I'm being mean. You know what I mean? Like towards the end of shop critiques, if I'm just zipping through a shop, I, oh, I don't have anything. You You're know. not getting what you deserve out of it. Right. You guys aren't getting what you deserve. And it takes it does take a lot of energy. And I don't want to be known as the critique person. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's not what we do. We have a course that we sell professionally. Right. Like if you need a critique that bad, that's literally what that is for. Right. Which and I... it is so much content. Hold on. Okay. What? 
Okay. I do watch the others for trends and step-by-step -step instructions on how to create and sell a particular thing. I like your SEO videos. See, that's good that's feedback. Awesome. I appreciate that. Carla, I've heard a lot of similar things. That's insane. And that's one of the people that we... Again, coming from a corporate background. If you yeah. actually watch the like bio video on the channel, that's where they come from. Well, Penny said it does look more like a gamer zone, which doesn't go with your brand. We're kind of trying to go into the fun, funky retro because thing, Because we, we're not the like standard wear a sweater and drink coffee kind of people. I mean, we're, we're drinking coffee. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what I mean, though? Like, we're nerds. We're not like sit around and watch sitcoms and right, you said do everything trendy. We don't do uh, anything trendy. You said like, that ever. it doesn't go with our brand, but this is more our personality than, you know, when I look at the backgrounds of like, you know, the mommy blogger type YouTubers who have like the beautiful flawless home and the little plant and the little, you know, they've got everything is white and gray and bright and pretty and that's all that's nice not us right my upstairs is covered in like old vintage taxidermy and oddities and yeah you know and this is also and... a recording studio this was purpose built for both appearance and utility like i mix and i master here those are soundproof panels those mm -hmm. big those gray things they're thick they're and like these are for diffusion sends the audio in different places and these are acoustic foam backed so they both diffuse and absorb. This room is is set up specifically for that. Anyway, we don't have to get into specifics. Yeah. Uh, I don't need it to feel like a home. I'm here to listen to you both. Aww. I like the fun colors. I like it when Mark laughs and you two tease each other. Makes me laugh. See, that's what we want. We want to feel personal because for the most part here, obviously the Tuesday videos I think are a little bit more of a character that you guys see because it's it's meant to be educational content specifically, right? But this environment is meant to be more personal hands-on is that and this is not uh she a little bit is a little bit more perky than she, she's a bit she's the quiet book nerd i i don't really give you a character i curse less than i do in real life but i don't give you a character well, you get me yeah i so tuesday content wow. i've had a lot of people who have said you know that i'm different in the tuesday content and even my mom says like it's like seeing my daughter but it's not really my daughter and then one person <clears throat> last week had mentioned that I look disingenuous. I can't record a video and make it to the point, quick and snappy. Here's everything you need to know in like 12 minutes. And also sound personal. Right. I read a teleprompter. You guys can't tell that I read a teleprompter because I'm very good at reading a teleprompter. But I read a teleprompter. Um, and I write my scripts. All of my, I don't use chat GPT at all for my, my content. I 100% write every script. And you get the very best part of my brain where I had a day, it's usually Wednesdays when I write that content and I hyper-focus and I do all of my research and I get everything ready to go. And then on Fridays after the bean, I'm already warmed up. I've been talking to you guys for a while. I sit down and I record and I'm in the zone and I read my teleprompter. And that's why it sounds different, because if I were sitting here, you know, trying to record content, it would take me so long to edit. You know what I mean? And you guys can see it at the end of my newer um, YouTube videos. I've actually been putting bloopers at the end, like me trying to say judicially, ju ju judicially, judicially. Ju that's so funny. It was. Yeah, we love it. But um, I think that I think we're probably good. Now I'm reading through. There's a lot of positive like critiques and, and information. I don't want here. them to be positive. I want them to tell me what I'm doing wrong. But you're not, you're not, you're not doing anything wrong. I, the, the big consensus, <laughs> what I'm taking away from a lot of this is exactly what they're saying is that a lot of the content that we do is, is soft sell. We don't hard push any bull crap and have huge giant egos and pretend to be these like giant internet personalities, whereas everybody else does, which makes them disingenuous but we have longevity because we don't do that exactly which okay. means our growth is going to be slower right also gonna... nobody really seemed to hate the background so you can get rid of that okay <laughs> okay it okay. seems to be okay if okay. anything all we're going to do is improve it i have a thing that i wanted to attach here that is like a thing that it screws in and it's a like it it brings a planter set of hanging planters out there's a lot of stuff we can do to dress up the background but you guys also got to realize that like when we're not streaming this is my music studio too so like my my DJ tables are here and I have a giant speaker and a sub that goes over there and my guitars and bass and everything along with the like seven guitars that are over here. Like this is also my space, which once we once we move uh, into a new home, which we are planning to do either the end of this year or the end of next year, that should get easier because we're going to get something that's actually purpose built and 
probably put like 50, 60 grand into building a real studio. So, <laughs> but, but I appreciate your guys' uh, I appreciate your guys' feedback and your honesty, and it really it really does help. And we we love you guys for being here. There's still almost 300 of you, which if if you would have told us that, I mean, even three or four years ago, we had 60, 70 people in these live streams. I do. Absolutely blows my mind. Our stream two weeks ago, or no, no, before Christmas, had like over 500 people That's in insane. at one time. That's insane. I, I <laughs> we, we love you guys. and I, It's awesome. And I'm constantly trying to think of things that are actually going to help you. It's not like what gets the most views. Obviously, I need to make sure that I'm feeding the YouTube algorithm every once in a while. Otherwise, YouTube yes. decides to hurt me. Titles are clickbait, content never. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I, clickbait title clickbait thumbnail but the content should always exceed what you expect we're That's... also we're also working on that so if our titles and our pictures get a lot more clickbaity over the next like year or so gotta... don't get mad the content within i promise isn't just bait content <laughs> we we have we have to we have to we, we have, have to. to be able to compete with these people whose qu whose content is half the quality of hers yeah and gets 10 times the views we have to be able to compete with that stuff so i do have one last update um and I don't ever say anybody's names on stream when it comes to, you know, coaches and competitors. This isn't a competitor and it's not a small coach. Um, but I do want to point out that you guys should maybe, if you're one of those people who follows Russell Brunson, uh, maybe Google what he did a few days ago and maybe pivot away from him. Nice faces don't always mean a nice person. He did something really, really bad, and it's really hard to even find what he did. Because Not if you follow me on Twitter. I'm not <laughs> he, um... Yeah. Oh boy. He did. Some, I posted it in my stories. It's on it, the Handmade Alphas um, Instagram stories. I, I got so... I was so mad when I saw it. Um, but yeah, that's why we never used like click funnels and stuff. I've always kind of not been cool with how he teaches. And now he's done. We've been burnt with people that use it that we've collabed with in the past too. So he doesn't have a lot of um, morality and this just kind of goes to prove it. And yeah. I think that in just like Etsy stick with small creators, we're a team of now three people. HAA is still just the two of us, but uh, Michelle helps us answer our, our inbox that gets Literally fifty to sixty emails plus spam per day that we could public not inbox, not Pub students. Public inbox. Our stu our student inbox is fine, which is why we don't have quotas on HAA yet. Not be looking for the T. Yeah, it's goes to follow Mark on Twitter. What is my Twitter? The wrestling coach by the, one. Um, by the way, if you're gonna follow me on Twitter, I only use it to meme at uh, politicians and s post at. At famous people, maybe so. don't give them your Twitter. Yeah, I'm let not going to give you my Twitter. Let them find it. Yeah, you know what? I'll just I'll just say it. He punched a 14 year old in the head twice at his child's wrestling match, and and there's video of it. And he didn't get taken out, and the cops weren't called or anything. Yeah, nobody pressed charges. Nobody he, did anything. He got to remain in the building throughout the rest of the match. He just was able to walk away after assaulting a child um, that his child was wrestling, and. That is the most absolutely despicable thing that I have ever seen. I saw the video because I didn't believe it at first. But yeah, he just socks this child, 14 years old. It is a child in the head, in the back of the skull twice. So screw that guy. I don't name drop, but screw that guy. For real. <laughs> He's a terrible person. That is absolutely atrocious. Here's some bubbers for you while we go. I don't want to end on a negative note. No. I want to end on bubbers tummy. On bubbers tummy. And on bubber tummy. All right. Let's, uh, yeah, you want to... a good boy. So vile. Yeah, that's... All right. We love you guys. We absolutely love you guys. Thanks for sticking around, right. all like 300 of you. Make sure you like the video. If you really do want to contribute, you can't buy HAA and you don't like have any financial way of helping. Yeah, for real. Um, hang out oh, and donate to our charity, uh, water.org right now. Oh, We're doing... I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. I keep forgetting to mention it. Water.org. They supply clean drinking water to um, areas of the world where clean drinking water is literally impossible to acquire. Not only do they provide water, but they provide that water while they install systems that will um, ensure that, you know, they will 
get forever access to clean drinking water. I don't know exactly how they do it, but I know that they like dig and install like actual like clean drinking water systems. Probably they filter the water that is already naturally in the in the area so that it is clean. Um, but definitely check that out. The link for that is somewhere under the chat. And we're going to do a Printify video and a photo shoot after lunch. So yep. thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Also, they said, what's his ex-username? I'm not going to give it out just because I only, it's almost all negative content that I post on there like everybody else. So, but we love you guys and we will see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Say bye, Bobby man. Oh, he's purring so loud.